Hey guys, uh, you probably noticed I got a haircut, um, and I now have things growing out of my face, um, but that is uh, new, and I did get a haircut, I had a man bun for like a day, and I didn't really do it on purpose, I went to go get my haircut, and the lady put all my hair up and shaved off the sides, and I kind of felt sorry for the hair that I had spent a year growing out, and I wanted to keep it a little bit longer, so I told her to leave it, I, it was literally the crappiest haircut ever. She just shaved the sides off and then left the top and I put it in a bun and it was like ridiculous and it was annoying so I had it cut off. But anyways, I want to thank all of my new subscribers. My channel's been growing really, really ridiculously lately. So thank you guys very much for that. And I will get to what I am trying to get to now. Let's talk about props. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about propellers lately. People have been asking me if I've tried um, the new HQ V1S tri-blade and the V1S quad blade and polycarbonate and in glass nylon and uh, why do I still use the 5040 by 3 and have I tried the 5040 by 4 and have I tried the doll and why do I use 6 inch and have you tried the VS1 notch cut thingies and have you tried the Racecraft 5051 and all this crazy stuff so let me talk about all of that right now so I'm going to start with the 5040 this is a 5040 by 3 it started out 2015 uh, someone put it on my quad when I went to go check on some batteries at Durham Nationals 2015. That someone was all-wheel drive quads, Sean Harlan. And he actually put this on my quad before I was going to a race. Like, literally, I was about to go race. He put these props on there. I'd never flown them before. He'd been raving about them. I was like, no, I don't want to do it because it's going to be expensive because you have more of a chance to crash and break a propeller than a bi-blade. Anyways, he put it on there, took it out, flew it, fell in love with it. Literally been flying this prop for over a year and a half now. It's like my favorite prop, go-to prop. I recommend it to everybody. It's not the most durable prop in the world. It's made of glass nylon. It's semi-flexible. The air, pro air profile is very, very, very thin, and it's so lightweight. This is a 3.5 gram prop. This is very light for most propellers these days. Most propellers these days are pushing upwards of 5 or 6 grams, which is almost double of what this prop weighs. Now, why does weight matter, you ask? So we're dealing with a motor. We're dealing with an AC motor. This is a three-phase motor. Basically, our quadcopters are designed to speed up and slow down these different motors. That's what the flight controller does. All the speed controllers are is just little DC to AC converters. They're converting your DC voltage from your battery, or DC amp, amp draw, or DC amperage current, uh, to, from your battery to the motors. And they're transitioning it in three-phase AC, and that's what spins these up. Um, when you do that, the lighter weight... The less drag, the faster it can speed up, and the faster it can slow down. So when you go to a heavier prop, it actually hinders the flight controller from speeding up and slowing stuff down by small, small amounts, micros, milliseconds, like super, super small amounts. But it's enough for me to notice, and I know a lot of other people can notice as well. So that is currently why I still prefer the 5040 by 3 is because it's lightweight. It's not the most durable prop in the world. Like I said, if you hit something, it's going to break. You're going to crash. But... It has, the mo it has the best flight characteristics for my particular style, style of flying, which is fast, snappy, very consistent as far as it's consistently balanced every single time. I can put a prop on without balancing it. I don't balance my props. I know people have asked me that in the past. I don't. I just pull them out of the package, put them on the quad, and that's what I like about it. It's consistently balanced. It's very smooth, and it's fast. It's got that locked-in corner kind of situation feel where you go into a corner and you got a little bit of more locked in than you would have with a bi-blade. And that low throttle response of the tri-blade over a bi-blade, you have that one extra bl blade. It gives you that little bit more confidence at low throttle because it has a little bit more control. You have a bigger disc area, you have more service area, and it can grip the air a little bit better at a lower RPM. This is my favorite prop. Now, talk about the V1S, which is the new... Tri-Blade by HQ, which is basically here to replace this prop. Um, this prop, I really like it. It doesn't really suit my flying style. It's way more efficient than this prop. Probably I can get maybe 15 to 30 more seconds of flight time with this guy. However, it doesn't have the thrust numbers that this does, so it doesn't feel the same. And it also is a little bit heavier. This is about 3.8 grams. This is 3.5. So I can feel that. I do have to increase D a little bit. It does have a little bit more of an airfoil, so that is going to increase the drag. The weight of it increases the drag. So all of that combined puts it into a category where this is probably not going to be my go-to prop. I just It just doesn't do what I need it to do, so I'm not going to be switching to this prop. Now, let's talk about the glass nylon version of the quad blade of that exact same prop, which is the V1S. This is the V1S quad blade, 5040 by 4. Now, 
This is one of my favorite props that has come out in the last year. This prop, although it's heavy, it weighs about five grams, uh, which is significantly heavier than this, it's about a gram and a half heavier. It does a lot of things that I really like in a prop. It has a very quick response. It's got it really planted in the corners feel. Because it is so stiff, it feels really, really nice in the corner. Now, it's not that much heavier than the old prop that I use, so it doesn't necessarily feel that much different. I will say it feels a lot better than the tri-blade version as far as throttle response and feel. Um, I can notice it's heavier, but again, it feels it feels pretty good. I do have to add a little bit more D into the tune to get this thing to stop because it's a little bit heavier, uh, and you have to anticipate that stop a little bit more, so that's why the D increases. Now, polycarbonate version of this is pretty dang good as well. So this is the glass nylon prop. This is the polycarbonate version of that exact same prop. You can see that it's a lot bendier. Now, with it being bendier, it's you would think it would be a little more slushy in the corners with it bending and whatnot, but you know, since it has four blades, it has all of that surface area to distribute all of that load that it's taking on the blade. So it doesn't actually feel that slushy in the corners. It has this very similar throttle response, and this is actually lighter. So this is a four and a half gram prop, where this is a five gram prop. This is the exact same propeller, just in a different material. Now we're talking about glass nylon and we're talking about polycarbonate. Polycarbonate, I know I had done this thing a couple weeks ago about biodegradable props. Now, if you're running a polycarbonate prop, you don't really need to worry about biodegradable props because it doesn't break. It just bends. Very rarely does it break. So you're not really leaving pieces out in the, in the wilderness. You're just bringing back broken props. I'm assuming you're bringing them back. Please bring them back. And they're recyclable. Polycarbonate, it's, it's, if it's solid polycarbonate, and I know this is only polycarbonate because it has nothing in it. It's perfectly transparent or translucent. Can't really see really well through it, but... Anyways, it's translucent, and this is recyclable. You can throw this away. They will grind it down. They will make more things out of polycarbonate out of it. So this is a really good option. The only problem I have with it, it just it has a little bit more of a resonant frequency, and this is a little bit more stiff. This, if you were to get it to be stiffer, it would have to be thicker. Having to be thicker increases the weight. It also increases that, that time that I'm talking about spinning up and slowing down the motor. So it just it just doesn't do everything. There's not a perfect prop out there. Everyone's going to tell you something different. Now, with that being said, I've talked about thicker props. I've talked about thinner props. I've talked about polycarbonate props. Let's talk about the Racecraft 5051. So I personally have flown them one time. That was all it took for me to realize that it wasn't the prop for me. I have seen my friends fly them one time. Um, it's just not, it just doesn't do what I want out of a prop. It's efficient going at a consistent speed. It draws a hell of a lot of amps if you're punching out, which basically everyone these days that is flying a mini quad, that's all they're doing. They're on and off the throttle, on and off the throttle. Whip, 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 whip. They're going backwards, they're flying stuff, they're trying to imitate Johnny FPV because basically everybody's trying to imitate Johnny these days. So I don't get it. If you're punching out and doing that kind of flying style, it just, I don't know, the only person I've seen that can make it look really like it's not that prop is Zach and I don't know how he's doing it and I think it's because I have talked to him and I do know how he's doing it. He's running a different motor than what most people are running. Most people are running 2206, 2205, 2300, 2600. When you increase the KV of the motor you decrease the torque. You're basically taking away copper and increasing the amount of RPM that you get per volt. So when you do that, you decrease the torque. So when you're running a prop that's almost six grams, or actually it is six grams, that's the, uh, the Racecraft 5051, that is six grams. And remember again, this is 3.5 grams. The Racecraft is six grams. So when you're dealing with a prop weight that's that different on a motor that's not designed to spin that kind of prop, like a 2206, 2300 KV, or in this case, it's the Lumineer, which is actually a lower KV than the 2300, um, then it just doesn't do that. If you're dealing with a 2205, 2300, or 2400, you're basically losing all of this torque and you're putting a heavier prop on there so it's not going to feel like it should. It's not going to feel very responsive because you're having to spit up that much more weight and you don't have as much torque. So if you want to increase your torque and you want to increase the, the size of prop that you're going to run as far as the weight and the airfoil is concerned, then you need to go to a lower KV to gain more torque and you need to go to a bigger stator to gain even more torque. Now, lower KV increases efficiency. However, a lower KV and a fat prop like that with a crazy airfoil can kind of negate that efficiency that you've gained by going to a lower KV. So, 
I do think it has a it has a place. It's it's very very durable, and it's very very stiff. You can pretty much chop any of your racing opponents in half with it. However, you're going to have to run a larger stator, maybe a 2307 or even a 2407, with a lower kV around a 2000 kV uh, motor. With that being said, there are motors like the 2206, 2350 kV that I will say. They're not hitting the RPM they could potentially hit with a lighter prop because they're having so much more of a hard time spooling that prop up. So if you put this prop on there, you're probably getting, I don't know, 20,000 RPM, where when you put a racecraft prop in there, or if you put even um, a different HQ or something that draws a little bit more amps, is a little heavier, you're not going to get that 20,000 RPM because it can't. It just doesn't do it. Your battery can't supply the voltage. It can't supply the current. It can't do anything like that. So. One last thing, I'd like to share with you guys uh, one little thing that I don't promote products that are not sustainable. If I can't fly it consistently, if I can't continue to fly it, if I can't make it durable and yet know that when people buy it, it's not going to break on them in the first 10 cycles or the first 10 flights, then I, I'm not going to promote it. And that's why when people ask me to do reviews on products or people ask me to test products, like, you know, it, yeah, sure, it, it like looks really good on paper, but I can tell you right now that on my particular setup at 580 grams or 560 grams, anywhere from 550 to 600 really, um, it's just not sustainable. You, you're going to over, overpower the battery, the battery's going to die, and I've even had battery manufacturers like, why don't you use our batteries? And I'm like, well, you know, I have. I've tried your batteries. I've flown them, and they were really, really awesome for like 10 cycles, and then they were completely dead. So, as far as consistency goes and being able to keep up with the abuse that we're putting these things through this is why I continue to use a 2206 or a 2306 2300 or 2400 kV motor with a prop that's almost a year and a half old because all of this stuff is put into an equation that comes out the other side and is if you're not in the air you're not learning you're not having fun. The whole point about this thing is to get in the air and stay in the air as long as possible. If you're constantly building stuff because you've built a 6 inch quad that's 6S that runs a million kV motors and has all this lightweight stuff that breaks every single time you crash, what fun is that? Yeah, it goes really fast for one battery until you freaking hit a tree and then once that tree's basically said, get off me, then you say, alright, well now i got to spend five hours rebuilding my quad. So. I hope all of that information was good. I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about this. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns or even comments or things you want to see in the future, please post them in the comment section below. And thank you guys for watching. All of my new subscribers, thank you again for coming and watching my videos. I hope you're enjoying them. And please hit the like button. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Hey, guys. Hey guys, uh, you probably noticed I got a haircut.